All right, guys, uh, I want to go over really quickly with you what was on the video for today, completing the square, okay? Completing the square, I showed you on the video with the algebra tiles, like these things, called algebra tiles. Um, actual physical representation of completing the square, right? Can you do it without the algebra tiles? How do we fill in this blank right here? Take the middle term, uh-huh, divide it by 2, and square it. So what goes here? plus 16. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. What about here? 5 divided by, I mean, 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 squared? 25. All right. Some of you ask a question about a problem like this on the video. You said, what if the number is not, a, is, is not an even number? Well, we can still do it. We're just going to get a fraction or decimal, right? So what's 5 divided by 2? 2.5 squared? 6.25, right? And what about this last one? Divide by 2, so 81, okay? The other question you guys asked uh, on on the uh, the whisk was, will we ever subtract anything here? Why do you think the answer is no? Anytime we do a negative times a negative, it's a positive. Anytime we do a positive times a positive, it's a positive. Okay, we're squaring something, we're multiplying it by itself, so I am always going to get a positive number here, right? The other thing that I wanted to add a little bit to the video was the next step. Okay, this is a perfect square trinomial. That means something times itself is this. All right, we can we can just say, all right, let's factor this. If we factor it, what I'm going to end up with is x plus 4 times x plus 4. But because of how this is written, it doesn't really help me. What's another way I could write this? x plus 4 squared. And so this is how I want to be able to write it today. So how do I get from here, from the trinomial, to the binomial? Where does this term come from? Like if we don't want to have to think of factoring every time, this comes the, from the square root of this one, right? Where does this sign come from? The sign of the middle number, and where does this number come from? It's either the square root of 16 or half of 8, right? Either the square root of the last one or half of the middle one. And shouldn't it be both? Shouldn't it be the square root of 16 and half of 8? If it's not, we may have done something wrong when we completed the square, when we filled in this blank right here. Okay, so what is this binomial? You can think of factoring or you can think of this the ways we talked about up here. Either way, you should get the right answer. So what's this one? X plus 5 squared. All right, so what about this one? X minus 2.5 squared. And what about the last one? X minus 9 squared. Good. Feeling fairly comfortable with that? Okay, so jump to your worksheet, please. We're going to talk about parabolas first. Why? Because it's number one. Okay? But what I need you to understand is parabolas are, are pretty different from ellipses, circles, and hyperbolas. Okay? You, you eventually get to doing the same steps, but you start them pretty different. All right? You start this one with y equals or x equals. This one's not set up in the right form. How would I know what to set it equal to? Notice what this is set equal to and compare it to the rest. Notice what this is set equal to, compare it to the rest. How do I know what to set it equal to? The first one's you get y by itself because not x, because x is also squared. This next one, x is by itself. x is set equal to everything else because there's a y and a y squared. So what do you think we would solve for in this problem? Why would we solve for y? Because there's an x and an x squared. Okay, that's what has to be on opposite sides of the equal sign. All right, so let's start with number one. This variable is already set equal to each it, to everything else, and so we can start. Okay, I'm going to rewrite this problem. However, I'm going to leave myself a space right there. Okay, what am I going to do in that space? 
I'm going to complete the square. Okay? Kelly, would you do me a favor and get up for me? At the front board where the where those papers are with all the teaks that we have to that I have to teach you this year? Uh, look at the third page. Look at the third thing. What does it say? Use the method of completing the square. Like it spells it out for us. It tells me I have to know how to complete the square. However, I do want you to know something. Put your finger right on that on that one right there so everybody can see where it is. Guys, that's the last one we haven't done yet. We've done everything else on that on that list. Okay? Completing the square is the last thing that we have to do. So, what goes in this blank? 25, because negative 10 divided by 2 squared is 25. However, I have just significantly changed the value of this problem because all I did was add 25. I have two choices at this point. Because of the way the problems are, because of how things are set up, I'm going to do one today and one tomorrow, or one when we start talking about circles, ellipses, and hyperbolas, whenever that is. Okay? What I want to do today is, if I add 25 right here, what happens if I subtract 25 right here? What have I really added to the problem? Nothing, right? Because I've said plus 25 and minus 25, that's zero. Have I changed the value of the problem? No. Okay? Now I just want to look right there, just at my trinomial that I just created. Please tell me the binomial. X minus 5 squared, right? Does anybody know what 16 minus 25 is? <coughs> Negative 9. Oh my gosh, we're done. Look, isn't this vertex form like we talked about yesterday with parabolas? X minus H squared plus K? Then tell me where the vertex is. Five, negative nine. <coughs> what direction does this open? It is y equals, and if it's y equals, it opens either up or down. But I look right here and notice just there's no negative sign, so I know it opens up. Good. Close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Excellent. Look at number two. Number two. Can I start right out or do I need to do some finagling? Is the variable that doesn't have a squared with it the one that's solved for? Yeah, yeah so I can start it right out. Yeah. Okay? So I start to rewrite the problem. Ooh, not that. Y squared minus 12Y. And I leave myself a blank so that I have something to fill in. What am I filling in? 36. Very good. But if I add 36 there, I need to subtract 36 there, right? Because I'm working on the same side of the equal sign, aren't I? All right? Say again? Close. Yeah, it's just y. y minus 6 squared. Everything else was right. Okay? And what is 34 minus 36? Negative 2. Guys, look. That's vertex form. Now, please, please, please be careful and tell me what the vertex is. Are you just saying a bunch of numbers? Yes. Great. X minus or equals Y minus K squared plus H. Where's my vertex? HK negative 2, 6. 
I know several of you said it, but other people were like, negative six, negative two, negative two, it's negative six, six, two, negative six, two, negative two. Yeah, it doesn't, just doesn't work that way. We don't just guess till we're right. We, we know. What direction does it open? How do you know? It is x equals, so it has to open either left or right. And there's a positive one right there. How do you feel about this? Any questions? Ask me then. We good? Turn to the very back. To the very back. One of the things that I need you to be able to do is I need to be able to give you any equation on this list and just by looking at it, you tell me what shape it is. Now, <clears throat> you can ask any of my other classes today. When I started introducing this, they were like, oh my gosh, this is so hard. And I was like, be patient and go with me. And by the time they got to the end, they were like, oh my gosh, this is so easy. And I'm like, I know, you just don't listen to me. Okay, so just go with me here for a second, would you please? This right here is standard form. That looks ugly. I know, don't care. Okay, this is standard form of a conic, which is what again? What's a conic? Try again. What is a conic? Intersection between a plane and a cone. Say it with me. Intersection of a plane and a cone. Okay? So if I'm looking at this first equation right here, anything that's in front of the x squared is the a. Whatever's in front of the y squared is the b. Whatever's in front of the x is the c. Whatever's in front of the y is the d. And the constant is e. So tell me from this first equation, what is a? What's b? c? 4, d, negative 8, and e, negative 29. What about the second equation? What's a? 1, what's b? 1, what's c? 5, what's d? Negative 14, and what's e? 39.25. What about the next one? What's a? 1, what's b? 1, what's c? 8, what's d? Negative 2, and what's e? Negative 19. Last one, what's A? 1, what's B? B is the one in front of the Y squared. Look, it even tells you to be careful. Cuidado. 1, isn't it? What about C? 2, what's E? I mean, sorry, D? 10 and E. 15. Please look at all these and compare them and see if you can tell me why it's a circle. Okay, in these particular problems, A and B are always one, okay? Are they always going to be one? No, but what are they always gonna be? A and B are always gonna be the same. They're always going to be the same. Whatever they are, they're always going to be the same. Okay? And don't worry, there's a little summarization page down here. We'll write those when we get there. Okay? So let's look at ellipse. It tells you these next two are ellipses. What's A? 16. What's B? 25. What's C? Negative 64. D? 150. And E? Negative 111. What about this next one? A, 1, B, 49, C, negative 6, D, 196, and E, 156. Okay? So just compare the two of those and see if you can figure out why it's an ellipse. While it is a good observation that both of the C's are negative, are both of the C's always going to be negative? No. We really need to focus on A and B. 
they are square roots, they may not always be square roots, but that is a good observation. They are different. Okay? A and B are the same for in a circle, for an ellipse, A and B are different. Okay? Look at hyperbola. A, B, negative 4, C, D, 8, and E, 185. Now, they didn't really give us anything to compare, because we can't compare to figure out what has a hyperbola, but can you compare it to the ones above and see if you can figure out why it's a hyperbola? What? A negative B or A, okay? Again, we're going we're gonna to fill in the, the summarization, but not both. Very good. Okay, we're going to fill in the summarization in a second and write all this down. What about a parabola? A, 1, B. Why is it 0? There's not a Y squared. C, negative 10. D, negative 1. And E, 16. Cuidado. That means be careful or caution. Is that correct? Yes. That is Spanish, yes. Okay, so what about this one? What's A? One. What's B? Wait, A is one? Tell me where the X squared is. There's not one. A is zero. There ain't one. That's exactly right. Oh, my. What's, what's B? One. What's C? C is negative 1. Why is C negative 1? Yeah, isn't, isn't standard form supposed to equal 0? This one doesn't. we got to subtract X from both sides. That gives us a negative 1 value for C. What about D? Negative 12 and E? 34. Cuidado. A? 1. B? 0. C? 8, D, 2, and E, 10. Why is it just 10? <clears throat> Very good. You'd have to add 10 to both sides to get it to equal 0. So now let's summarize what we just talked about. If it's a circle, then A and B are the same. So how can I mathematically say that? A equals B. Very good. What if it's an ellipse? A doesn't equal B. That's exactly right. <sighs> you guys laughed at him. He was right. However, however, what? Uh-huh. A and B do have the same sign. They're either both positive or both negative. We did talk about that. You remember that? Okay. If the equation is a hyperbola, then what? Can we think of a, a, a little bit better math word to use here? Better vocabulary? Opposites like opposite signs. Okay? <clears throat> Cuz see the value doesn't doesn't have to be opposites, right? This isn't 9 and negative 9, is it? Or 4 and negative 4. It can be that, but it doesn't have to. So it's the signs that we're talking about being opposites. Fair enough? If the equation is a parabola, a or B equals zero. Or another way to think of it, only one term is squared. Okay? Now, let me tell you something for the record. On Thursday, not tomorrow, on Thursday when you walk into class, 
These are the six problems I will be checking for homework. Okay? These are the six problems I'm checking for homework on Thursday. Now, we did parabolas today, didn't we? So could you do any of these tonight? Which one or ones? Which one of these is a parabola? 13. Are any other ones parabolas? And how do you know that 13 is a parabola? It only has one squared term. Very good. Okay? Do you have any questions? Everything else is either circle, ellipses, or hyperbolas. Please read these directions and know what you're supposed to put with each one of them. We will continue working on this in class tomorrow. There is no flipped video tonight. Okay, no flipped video tonight. Any questions? Thank you. Kingston out.